Check this out. Eminem, Kanye West, Damage Control. It's all happening. Static Selector. Shout out to DL McGee. He hit me with this DM Friday morning. How can you be sleeping right now? Wake up, new Eminem album. <laughs> That's exactly what I was doing. Straight knocked out. Now out of nowhere, Marshall Mathers unleashed Kamikaze, his 10th studio album. The cover art's an ode to the Beastie Boys classic, License to Ill, which is super dope, 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 dope. Dr. Dre is an executive producer, but isn't listed on any individual songs and worked with Mike Will made it. S1, Tay Keith, a handful of others on the soundscape. The end of the title track, Kamikaze, and the crux of Nice Guy, for example, sound dirtier than M Beats have in over a decade. That's a good thing. Classic Marshall Mathers staples are still included on the rest of the project. A couple of songs about craptastic relationships, for example, but this time they don't sound like stadium-sized barn grill raps. You know, the type of raps you hear at places that'll play M, then Metallica, then Nelly, all in a row. This is more like 8 Mile Eminem, like B-Rabbit. There ain't no gratuitous chainsaws and grave sites, rotten pieces, not on this one, not really. He also brought out world-class MCs. Joyner Lucas is on Lucky You, Royster 5 9 is on Not Alike, All Rain Like Khaleesi. It's all happening. Social media gravitated towards all the name droppings scattered across Kamikaze. Joe Budden, Charlamagne the God, DJ Academics, Tyler the Creator, Lil Xan, Lil Pump, Lil Yachty, not really Lil Yachty, but still Lil Yachty, all caught a piece of Marshall's outrage. M's made a career of kicking rocks at pop stars, so this is nothing new, but still, Always fun to hear. Not a like is interesting though. M dedicates two minutes and 19 seconds to dismembering Machine Gun Kelly. A few years back, MGK tweeted that M's daughter Haley was cute. Then last March, Kelly sent subs at Slim on Tech Nine's No Reason. Here's a clip. Popped in on the top charts at the cop card, so remind y'all you just rap, you not guards. I mean, the song is called No Reason, so I guess he didn't have to have a reason to really do that. Either way, M busts back with a blistering rap guy. Godly verse. He says, this little cocksucker, he must be feeling himself. He wants to keep up his tough demeanor. So he does a feature, decides to team up with Nina. But next time you don't got to use Tech 9 if you want to come at me with a submachine gun. And I'm talking to you, but you already know who the fuck you are, Kelly. I don't use sublims. Sure as fuck don't sneak this, but keep commenting on my daughter, Haley. <laughs> that was fun. Now on the exact same day, supposedly unrelated, MGK goes on Funk Flex and drops four bars at g Easy. He says g Easy's biting his style and that he smack bellies with g Easy's girl. Two hours later, g Easy delivers Bad Boy in response to MGK, calls him irrelevant and says he and Flex have something in common. Both of them got their spots taken from him and then gives a shout out to New York radio station Power 105. He also says it's ironic all of this happened on the exact same night Eminem dissed MGK. Look at that, a white rap beef royal rumble erupting just in time for Labor Day. Jesus. All the tracks are worthy listens, links in the description, but the wildest part, Royce's verse, the first verse on Not Alike, Royce shouts out young Gerald. He gives him props, says his Maserati's white and cool, like G-Eazy. There's a lot going on here, but this is super fan stuff, man. Super fan stuff. Something, comparatively speaking, revival lacks severely. Here's another super fan moment, Stepping Stone. Slim breaks down the breakup of his former group D12. It's incredible incredibly bittersweet, and as a fan of the Dirty Dozen, it's awesome hearing M reminisce on their relationship. It's also awful hearing confirmation that D12 is over. This is a great example of M getting viscerally personal without talking about Haley or Kim. The most compelling part, at the end of the closing verse, M explains that at this stage in his life, he can't be the guy everybody depends on for entire careers. I'm barely charting myself, he says feels like I'm on a descent. Life as an aging megastar is woven into the fabric of Kamikaze. There's several references about the challenges he faces, trying to keep up with this noisy era and how these kids are too 
mentally retarded to understand top tier lyricism. He also acknowledges that he took an L on Revival, which received the worst reviews of his career. And he acknowledges how his BET cipher targeting Donald Trump and drawing a line in the sand and raising a middle finger to his fans fractured his audience. Check out these bars from The Ringer. That line in the sand wasn't even worth it, because the way I see people turning, making it seem worthless, is starting to defeat the purpose. I'm watching my fan base shrink to thirds, and I was just trying to do the right thing, but word, has the court of public opinion reached a verdict or still yet to be determined? Because I'm determined to be me, critique the worship. But if I could go back, I'd at least reword it and say I empathize with the people this evil serpent sold the dream to that he's deserted. There's an air of damage control surrounding Kamikaze. This is the first time we received two M projects in under 10 months, for example, and it makes sense. In this climate, when you're fresh off an L, the best thing to do is put on another beat and get back to the mission. No artist can survive by alienating their audience, and I highly doubt M would have dropped again this soon if Revival was more well received. This one's for the core. It embodies the essence of the best of Eminem. It's littered with conflict, disses, and dysfunctional relationships wrapped in super incredible rapping, which is what M stands love most. That coupled with his admission that he would have reworded dropping an F-bomb on his audience, and this whole listen feels like an olive branch to super fans. We detailed the blowback of Slim's BET Cypher and Eminem's Tiger Woods moment. Check it out if you missed it. But the thing I did respect about M's Trump disses was that at least he referenced specific actions and policies that he disagreed with. He talked about the Muslim ban, for example. On the other hand, when Kanye West showed up in May rocking a signed MAGA hat on Twitter and screaming slavery was a choice on TMZ, Followers of Yeezus reacted as if their shepherds sold out. Expectedly so. Look, here's another aging megastar who inspired so many, so many years ago when he said George Bush didn't care about black people and used to rap about how his mom was arrested for the sit-ins, now boldly supporting an agenda his core audience feels oppressed by. And what was even worse was that Ye wasn't very clear on communicating his reasons for doing so. All that viralness was void of policy or positions. All we got was free thought and dragon energy and Candace Owens. From May through most of August, it all felt like some elaborate troll to sell sneakers, as if Michael Jordan called him up and said, hey, Republicans buy shoes too. The irony is, is that it's not that difficult to defend Donald Trump, especially if you're Kanye West. Maybe you're a wealthy person or a corporate person and you're excited about the trillion dollar tax cut. Maybe NAFTA wasn't good for you or your family and your industry and you think we need to trash them trade deals. Maybe you've been a fan since the apprentice and you think he's funny you're fired maybe you don't trust the fbi nobody trusts the fbi maybe you're like you know neither party's ever really done anything for me i'm a vote trump he's the outsider maybe the whole system will burn down or reset. Kanye could have named any policy and it would have felt better, but Kanye didn't because Kanye couldn't. Kanye didn't know about the administration's support of net neutrality, for example, which removes a fair and open internet, which allows ISPs to throttle bandwidth as they see fit. We talked about that in Black Rappers Going Extinct. No, Kanye likes Trump because their friends and Trump's rise to the White House showed Kanye that Kanye could be president. Kanye likes Trump because Trump's a reflection of Kanye, which is the most Kanye reason to like anybody. Here's what Kim Kardashian told Jimmy Kimmel in July. You know, to make it clear, when Kanye, we would talk about it, and we would talk about policies, and he doesn't necessarily agree with the policies. He likes his, um, kind of, just his, his personality. His way. And, and, his the, way. and, yeah. and how he made it to, to be president when everyone really underestimated him. Now we've detailed Kanye West's legacy of outspokenness in a number of pieces. Check out I Miss the Old Kanye or Kanye West versus Barack Obama, Eight Years of Shade, or check out my debate at Oxford Union on whether Kanye West is more relevant than William Shakespeare. Links in the description. Either way, as another Yeezy season dominated headlines, the music Kanye actually released received mixed reviews. At best, Pusha T's Daytona and Kid C Ghost with Kid Cudi were two of the best projects released in 2018. Props for that. But his project with Nas was critically panned, received the worst reviews of his career. His solo project, Ye, was critically panned, received the worst reviews of his career. Tiana Taylor's project received a solid reception, but she complained about the process. Ye and Kid C Ghost are still on the charts. Ye's at number 48. 
KSG's at 171. The rest fell off completely. By no means is dropping five projects back to back to back to back to back light work. It's an impressive task, even if he told Jimmy Kimmel he was napping most of the time. Either way, for the first time, at least musically, at least for his core super fans, it felt like Kanye West was canceled. Then this same week, just before Labor Day, Ye gave a powerful interview on WGCI in Chicago. He explains his reasons for going MAGA with more clarity than we've heard yet, and reaffirms his track record of being correct when he goes left while everyone else is going right. He talks about being bipolar and mental health. He says he's going to put his ideas to work for Chicago. Then he apologizes. This is lightly edited, but watch this. And when you were, when you were apologizing, I felt as though you, you got it. And, and, I, and I humbly accept your apology and I receive it. I really do receive it and I appreciate it. I really do. Thank you. The, thank you for letting me see and feel this because like when you be out and on TV, on social media, you never get this level of a connection or this level of a, a feeling of, you know, what my voice could really mean because someone could come and say, well, you only stream this much or this didn't sell, or this, that, that. And it makes you feel like your voice is not meaningful. Don C just is like not around as much and the people that were around or starting to make money just didn't care about me as much as Don C did because we like moving like Kanye West was like an entity like a money making machine or something and you get into that situation and you don't have people that are continuously looking out for your best interests at all costs and making sure because I even had people that was with me at TMZ that could have stopped it. They could have stopped it. They could have mm -hmm. said like, yo, this is going too far. Right. That's just allowing, you know, these things to happen. So I believe that the the you know the downfall of Kanye West is direct de directly related to Don C not being around. Wow. Uh, and because at the very beginning of my career, right when I was blowing up and Monop was managing me, because Monop manages me now again, we, um, you know, we, we rebuilding, you know, what I can do. And it's a new speaking third person. It's a new Kanye West that you're going to see that's going to be better because of this mental health situation. It's going to be better because of this TMZ situation. And Don is actually... He's icing it down right now because I just told him I need him to be there for me so shit like this don't happen to me. Because it's... Now I got to return yeah. to her. The point is this, from Mike to Plug, fans have exalted Kamikaze so far as the return of the Marshall Mathers we love most. And while a cynical listen might lead some to believe this is just a rich old man screaming at clouds, something Machine Gun Kelly's rap devil response leans on heavily, the brilliance of this project conceptually shows up on the last half of the last verse on the last song. Venom is the first to be released from the soundtrack to the feature film on Spider-Man's Nemesis, which is about how an alien symbiote takes hold of Eddie Brock and turns him into a ruthlessly violent creature. M uses that as a metaphor to explain how he latched on to the parents of the generation he spends the majority of kamikaze criticizing. He says, then I wait to face the demons I'm bonded to because they chasing me, but I'm a part of you, so escaping me is impossible. I latch on to you like a... 
Parasite, and I probably ruined your parents' life and your childhood too, because if I'm the music that y'all grew up on, I'm responsible for you retarded fools. I'm the super villain dad and mom was losing their marbles to. You marvel that? Eddie Brock is you, and I'm the suit, so call me Venom. <laughs> There's a method to the mayhem conceptually, and ending your album by owning the clouds critics will say you're screaming at is super fan stuff on 100,000 trillion. We love this Eminem. We love it when he's angry, because it helps us contextualize our frustrations. We love it when he screams at pop stars and rails against this industry of cool because most of us think most of this is tone deaf anyway. We love it when he owns his failures and pushes his flaws to the forefront because most of us are still scared to do so. And meanwhile, Kanye's floating around on his cloud of free thought, co-signing people co-signed by white supremacists, sacrificing his super fans for something bigger he believes in, at least hearing him on WGCI cry and apologize and say the TMZ word vomit was a product of not having good people around him, and watching Kendra G break down in tears, all that's a reminder of how much we love Kanye and Eminem. They latch onto us because we invest so much of ourselves into them, and despite how craptastic it feels when it feels like they're disrespecting us for whatever reasons we might not fully understand, despite our opinions, in the end, none of us have the answers to these questions. Static selective. It ain't even Saturday, we dropping TBDs anyway. I appreciate y'all's patience. Clearly, I was inspired by this M project. I was also really inspired by what I saw with Kanye West this week as well. Few things I didn't talk about. Yeah, I know uh, MGK's Rap Devil is out there. I think it's credible. We'll definitely see what Eminem has in store for that. Also, because MGK dropped something, is it more likely Joe Budden drops something now? Could Eminem be battling all over the place? That would be incredible. I love Marshall in war mode. I've also softened my position quite a bit on how I felt about Kanye most of this summer. Like, sincerely, I have been cold on Kanye. I've been talking to a lot of people who are also cold on Kanye, but these people are taking positions that they believe in, and whether or not that I agree or understand it, I've invested so much in myself that I have to accept that this is just part of the natural evolution of artists. I don't know if we've ever seen these two artists be on the other side of the bell curve creatively the way they have been lately. Neither one of them is selling the way they used to. And part of that division is affiliated with larger political movements. This is the first time I've ever seen this in rap history, but what about you guys? Let me know what you think. As always, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow at the company man on everything. I'm Justin Hunt. It's all happening.